Good evening, saints. This is Wilbur Robinson, pastor of the Grace Temple Church of the Apostolic Faith. We're located at 1 Coleman Avenue, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 08034. Just want to come back tonight and drop off another little nugget uh, from the Lord. And uh, I just don't want to wear you out with this, but I just want us to hear what God is saying to Israel. And whatever he said to Israel back in these times, in these times that the, the Bible, the, the Bible, the Old Testament times, if you will, the same word is for us today. It is only one word uh, as God's word. And uh, we all have to speak the same thing, mind the same thing, walk by the same rule. Everybody is going to be judged by that one God. And that one God has a plan for uh, humanity. Huh? There's, a, there's a one rule, one law for the whole human family. So we have to get into it. But now he's dealing with Israel uh, in this sense. So we're going to be talking in Ezekiel today, Ezekiel 2 and, uh, and verse uh, t 2. And chapter 3, I want to spend some time in there just to show you what the Lord is, is uh, saying to is, uh, Israel. But I want you to understand that he's saying this to us today. We are in the body of Christ. We are grafted in. So we are Israel, if you will, now. You know, so what I want you to understand is that what you're going to hear tonight is for you and for me. Uh, we have to apply these things to ourselves and uh, make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing because God is going to judge whatever we do in this body while we're here on earth, okay? And if we pass the test, we're going to go in with him. And if we fail the test, we're going to go into the lake torment. You know, that's God's judgment. It's fair because it's already out here. He set it up. Huh? He set it up. This is what God wants. God wants to reward the righteous, and he's going to punish the unrighteous. Huh? That's it. It, 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 that's it. And so there's nothing we can do. It, it, it's, it's not fair. Huh? Why are you going to say it's not fair? Uh, he made you. He made me. God created everything. Everything that you see was created by God. God is, is in everything. He's over everything. He's through everything. Everything about anything comes from God. And so, so you, we don't have a choice. Huh? We either do God's will or not. Now, we do have a choice. We get to choose to do God's will or not. But we go, we don't get a chance to judge ourselves. Huh? Huh? In the end, in the end, everybody is going to stand before that one judge. And he's going to judge righteously. And the righteous are going to be with him. And the unrighteous are going to be totally separated from him forever. Okay. So this I want you to hear. Okay. Now, uh, Ezekiel is being commissioned here. Uh, by God to go and speak to, to uh, Ezekiel is going to speak to Israel. And uh, we want you to see what the Lord is saying to us. So it's going to be in chapter 2 and we're going to be in chapter 3. So right now we're going to start Ezekiel 2 and verse 1. And it says here, And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, and I heard him that spake unto me. And he said, Son of man, and well, actually he said, said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. Now, unto this very day is right where we are right now. Uh, people are serving God. Uh, no. We're not. So if, if we weren't, if we were serving God like we we're supposed to serve God, this pandemic wouldn't be all over us, huh? Worldwide. Uh, and look at the United States. Uh, look at the greatest the greatest nation on earth right now. We were, okay. I don't know if we still have that status. But look at us. Uh, we are under the leadership of, 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 of a satanic person. You know, this is the, the, the devil is moving in our administration right now. Okay, and the reason things are so bad in the United States is because we are totally turning our back on God, not even acknowledging the fact that this pandemic has something to do with God wanting us to do something to get back to Him, turn our attention back to Him. Huh? Hey, look, this is this is it. Huh? Uh, you know, preacher, because I know that these things come. When we are disobedient, when we turn from God, and what God wants to do is to get our attention 
draw us back to him. Huh? Uh, you know, look, you know, when things like this happen, people start praying. Uh, you know, we go back to our old ways once God blesses us and takes us out of the trouble, but at least it'll cause us to pray. Somebody's going to turn to God as a result of this pandemic. And the Lord knows who they are, hmm? and he's, 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 he's trying to get their attention. Are you one of them, huh? Where are you in the Lord? Huh? Huh? Look, God's going to take you through it. Hmm? If you're in Christ Jesus, regardless of what you're going through, if you are in Christ Jesus and this, pa this pandemic gets you and takes you out of here, so be it. You're going to be with the Lord. But if this pandemic, if you're in Christ Jesus, God is going to keep you from this pandemic so that he can use you to help to draw somebody out of the world unto him. Okay, so this is God's doing. Huh? This Look. The Lord does not put things on us, but he allows things to come into our lives to get our attention. Okay, the devil is the one that's doing this. The devil has gotten permission to put this plague on us here and now in the world uh, because they're setting up something. You know, the enemy is working behind the scenes. But don't you worry about it. If you're in Christ Jesus, you just stay in Christ Jesus. Okay, I got a little off that, but I want you to just understand that these things happen for a reason. Uh, it ain't no accident. Uh, no, you know, actually, God knows exactly what he's doing and why he's doing it. All right, so let's go a little bit further. Uh, it's a fourth verse says, And they are impotent children, stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. Okay. And thou, and thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words. The, the briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed by their looks, though they be re, a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, Hear what I say unto thee, be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. Okay, so God is saying, look, I'm sending you to, a, I'm sending you to, to, to do a tough job here. These are rebellious, hard-hearted people. They're not going to receive your word. They're not going to want to uh, uh, change their ways. They're going to speak evil of you. You're going to be in, in an environment of scorpions, and you're going to be amongst thorns. And so, what he's saying is, there's not going to be. You're not going to be in a comfort zone now. They're not going to receive you. He said, but don't you be rebellious, huh? Don't you be rebellious like them. You tell them what I said, and, and the Lord said, look, I'm giving you my words, huh? He said, open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. This is what he's going to give him. He's going to give him a little book. Okay. And he's going to tell him to eat this little book. And this is going to be God's word. Putting this, this is what God's going to be putting his word in him. So that he'll be given God's word. So what's he say down here? Uh said, but thou son of man, hear what I, uh, what I say unto thee. But be thou not, uh, uh, be not thou rebellious. Like that rebellious nation. He says, Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And then he said here in the ninth verse, And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And I spread it, uh, he, and he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mournings and woe. All right, so this is God's word. This is easy. I want to eat this. I want to eat it, you know. And it's going to be God's word that he's going to be speaking to Israel. And he said, look, they're not going to receive it. I understand something. People don't receive this word of God. I believe uh, 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 Apostle Zito Jennings refers to the Bible as the book of pain. <laughs> because it is. It's a book of pain to those who don't know God's word. They don't have a knowledge of God. So when people who don't know God are used to doing things their way. And they don't see anything wrong with the way they do things. Uh, but when they come to find out that there is a way that needs to be followed, then they rebel against it. So it's painful, you know, painful liars, you know, good liars, con men. They don't want to stop conning. They don't want to stop lying. Huh? Drug dealers, they don't want to stop doing dealing drugs, making a lot of money. You know, people who, who commit all kinds of crimes, you know, uh, professional uh, 
criminals, you know, this is, they don't want to hear this. Rich people, they don't want to hear that they need to stop trusting in their riches and start serving and trusting God. Uh, prostitutes, uh, they, this is how they look. They, they, you know what it is? A prostitute is not in, in prostitution for the sex. She's in it for the money, huh? as, the, as the money, making the money. Uh, you know, uh, uh, um, they, they, all these things that God speaks against, huh? all these things that God speaks against, these, these things are not easy to hear when I'm, I'm guilty and I'm being told that I need to stop. Same-sex marriage, huh? you know, homosexuality, huh? uh, gay and lesbianism, transgender and all this. This is against God's word. And look, these people don't realize that they're being manipulated by the devil. Uh, they don't realize that. So they believe that they're all right in what they're doing because it's their decision. You know, this, this thing about abortion, you know, uh, a, a women's rights to, to murder unborn babies. Huh? <laughs> look, they feel like this is my body. I can do it. No, uh -uh, no, you can't. It, it, nothing belongs to you. Everything belongs to God, okay? So I got off on that, but I just wanted you, I want you to hear these things because it's not, listen, if, you got, if you're a saved person and you're charged with God's word, you got you to gotta tell people what's right. Uh, and you ain't going to make a lot of friends. You're not going to have a whole lot of people just buddying up to you if you're going to give them the word of God and they can't live the word of God. So that's what the Lord is saying here to Ezekiel. You go, now I'm giving you the word, you're going to give them my words, uh, and they're going to know that there is a prophet among them. So I want you to understand that this is me giving you instructions. And I'm telling you that I'm going to back you up when you go in. So don't you be afraid of them. They ain't going to hurt you. Don't you be afraid of none of them because they're going to be rebellious. But I got your back. Okay, now let's go a little bit further. Chapter 3. Now let's go. We're going to get out chapter 3 a little bit here. It says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that that thou findest. Eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then I did eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. God's word. <laughs> God's word. It only gets bitter when you start giving it out to people. Uh, it ain't bitter to you. It's bitter to the one that's going to hear it. Sometimes you, you feel, you don't really feel comfortable telling people that they're wrong. You know, I mean, that's why the Lord is telling them not to be so upset. Don't be, don't be upset and uh, don't worry about the looks and the words that they're going to say. And I know it's not easy huh, to, to tell people that they're wrong because everybody wants to feel like they're okay where they are. So he goes on to say, Fourth verse said, and he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee up, uh, go get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. It's important. It's God speaking. Okay. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. God is saying, Look, you know, I'm not sending you to somebody who doesn't understand what you're going to be saying. These are my people. They have my word. They know exactly what I told them from the time I brought them out. And by the time I, I, I brought them into to this, 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 well, not in the body yet, but the, and when I look, I married them, I gave them my law, they're my people, and they have, they know what you're going to be saying is true, but they're not going to be able to receive it because they're hard hearted, stiff necked people. Listen, and he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them, for thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech, and not of a hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely, had I sent them, sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto me. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impotent and hard-hearted. Good gracious. God knows you. He knows you, saints of God. God knows you. He knows if you're real, and he knows if you're wrong. He knows. And he knew. He knew Israel was going to fall. He knew it. Look, they said, look, uh, when, when Moses told him, you know, that don't turn to the left or turn to, from the left or to the right. Just stay with the word of God. And everybody said, yeah, we're going to do just what you said, you know. And Joshua, the same thing. They told Joshua, yeah, we're going to do just what the Lord told you. And as soon as things get a little better, then they start doing 
going back and turning. You know, the Lord said, don't look, don't be doing what the heathens do. After a while, they started picking up these bad habits. And that's the way we are, saints of God. When we're in trouble, huh? when we're in trouble, we cry out to the Lord. The Lord heals, he hears, and he delivers. Once he delivers us, and then we go right back to doing what we're doing. You know, I, you know this is Israel. But I bet you know somebody who swore they were going to start coming to church as soon as they got out of the hospital, in the hospital on this sick bed. They're dying. Huh? The Lord bring me out of this. I'm going to come to church. I'm going to be the first one there. As soon as they get out of the hospital, they can't be, can't be. They got all kinds of reasons why they can't come to church. If I get me a new car, I'll, if I get a car, I'm telling you, I'm going to come to church. I just don't have no transportation. Huh? When they get a new car, they drive right past the church huh? real fast so you don't see them. You know what I'm saying? You know, we want God to do things for us, but we don't want to do for him what he wants us to do. You know, it's, it's just, it look, it's, that God is talking to Israel, but that same spirit that's working in Israel is working in the Christian community today, okay? And if you're in the body of Christ, you better brace yourself because that devil's coming after you too. Uh, he ain't just coming after weak saints. He's coming after strong saints, trying to break you down. Uh, he wants to keep, He wants to break you because, listen, you once belonged to him. Huh? And you were once a good servant of his, and you have defected now. You've turned away from him. You've, go, you've committed treason, huh? and you're going to serve another God. Huh? Uh, he wants you back. He hates God, and he hates you. Okay. So let me go a little bit further. Now, I want to get down here. Uh, okay. Now, I'm not going to do all this. What, not, all right. Just, just let me keep reading. I'm going to keep reading. I'm not going to keep you all night, but I just want I want you to hear what God is saying. To, uh, to Ezekiel. And uh, the eighth verse here says, Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. See, God said, I'm, I'm preparing you, so you go, ahead, you go ahead and do what I'm telling you to do. As an adamant, harder than flint, have I, have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto, unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears. Listen, saints, and God, listen, this is a message. Get this word in you, in your heart. Yeah? I ain't talking about hearing what you hear. Get it in your heart. And if it's in your heart, that inner ear is going to receive that thing and understand that this is God's word and it is right. I may not fully understand it, but once I get it in, then it's going to start working so that I'll have a better understanding. And he's letting him know because he's sending him to do a difficult job. And he wants him to know that I am in this with you. Okay. So you just go ahead and say what I say when I tell you to say. 11th verse. And go get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people and speak unto them and tell them, thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Then the spirit took me up and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing saying, blessed is he, blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another and the noise of the wheels over against them and a noise of a great rushing. So I, so the spirit lifted me up and took me away and I went, I went in bitterness, okay, in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. <laughs> and he said, look, you, you went in bitterness. What are you talking about? Look, I got a tough job, man. This, I got to go and do this thing. He said, but I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit, but the Lord was strong upon me. Huh? The spirit of God was pushing him. Huh? And that spirit of God will push you too. If you let yourself be used of God, God is going to get you to where he wants you to be. So you have to learn to just look. This is a hard task, but God, I know this is God. That's why you need a relationship with God, because you got to know when God is speaking huh? and when the devil is speaking. And that's why the Bible tells us somewhere, try the spirits, huh? <laughs> whether they be of God or not, because these are spirits that are coming against you. Huh? So you got to try them things. Make sure that if something coming to you, and some advice is coming to you, Go consult the counselor, the wonderful counselor. Okay, so the spirit, 14 again. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to them of the captivity in, uh, in Telebib that dwelt by the river Kibar, 
and I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them. Seven days. Look, he got there. He got there, but he didn't go in right away. He just sat there <laughs> and looking at them, trying to figure out what in the world's wrong with you people. Huh? This is God that's been blessed you. God has brought you all the way out of all of your captivities. Every time you go into captivity, he brings you out when you when you cry out to him and look at you now. And I'm here to bring this. This, this is it's a, it's a bad message, really. But it's one that's going to turn you if you can, if you're here. But if you won't hear, buddy, you're in trouble. This is the 16th verse. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Now, this is what I want you to hear. And this is this will take you home. This is it. I want you to hear this. And I want you to understand. And I want you to take it in. And I want you to go back and I want you to read it for yourself. I want you to run your commentaries on it. I want you to understand what God is saying. The saints of God. This is life or death. It, life or death. Huh? If we do what God's word says do, we got life. If we don't do it, death. There's no middle ground, no in-between. Huh? Ain't no gray area. It's either white or black, if you will. Huh? And over here, it's either love or hate. And the love is in Christ Jesus. Uh, the hate is in the world. That's Satan's world. So you just get this thing right and understand what God is saying now. He wants you to take heed to it for yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? Take heed to it for yourself. Now, this, this, your, 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 look, your soul's counting on you to get him back to heaven. <laughs> he wants to go back with the Lord. Okay. 17th verse again. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, and here we go, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Do you hear what the scripture is saying? If the Lord tells you to go to somebody who is outside of the Word of God, and the Lord wants you to give them their word, give them His Word, whether they hear that Word or whether they don't hear that Word, that's on them. They're going to be judged based on the decision that they make. But if this, listen to what He says here. He says, and when and when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning. I'm telling you, Ezekiel. To go tell that sinner man that he's going to die if he doesn't turn from his iniquity. And if you don't tell him, that's why I told you up here, don't be rebellious. If you don't tell him and he dies in his iniquity, I'm holding you accountable. Huh? Uh, listen now. This is this is God's word. God is looking. He, he's you. He needs us to to, to 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 do the work down here. He look. God is able to do whatever God wants to do, whenever He wants to do, however He wants to do it. But He has given us charge, mankind. The first of God. First of all, we have to find out who He is. Secondly, we have to acknowledge that we are sinners. Huh? We were wrong. We didn't know that we were wrong. Once we come to know that we were wrong, then we repent for our wrongdoing. And then what we do is we understand once we repented, now, Lord, what do I do? So now the Lord is going to tell you, all right, now that you've repented, I want you to be baptized. huh? I want you to be baptized so that I can wash away that old sinful nature that you were born into. So I need you to go down into the water. I want you to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why, uh, preacher? Because the power is in the name Jesus Christ was buried for our, uh, our, our sins. He died for our sins. So now when we are buried in the water, we are buried in his likeness. So now when we come up out of the water, we come up like Jesus Christ. huh? And so that we need to be water baptized to wash away your old sinful nature. Now what, preacher? Now you got to be filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, which is the power and the spirit of the living God has to come in you. 
And what happens when he comes into you? Your old nature is is, is replaced. There's a transformation. Uh, you've been changed from a natural man to a spiritual man. And the Bible tells me that once that takes place, you are now in Christ Jesus. Your life is hid in Christ in heavenly places. So you are now a spiritual person. You're still housed in this old uh, carnal body, but you're a spiritual man, spiritual woman. Uh, you're a different person. Uh, so now you have to do what God has given you to do so that somebody else can be saved down here on this earth. That's what he's talking about, saying to God. And he's letting him know, he said, now, if you don't want him, I'm going to hold you accountable for it. Uh, if he dies in his sin and I sent you to tell him to give him an opportunity to turn uh, and he doesn't turn, that's on him. But if you don't, if he dies and you didn't tell him, it's going to be on you. Okay, 19th verse. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turned not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Huh? He's still going to die because he didn't turn. But what about what's going to happen to you? You're going to be, you're going to, you've delivered your soul. Now, it lets me know that if I am told to tell him and I don't tell him, I'm going to suffer the same fate that he would suffer because he didn't turn, huh? Because what he say here, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Deliver thy soul from what? Huh? From the judgment. <laughs> Come on now. You got a job to do, saints of God. You got to live godly and you got to let God work through you to do his bidding. Huh? It ain't about us no more. Huh? We got to come out of self now. We got to give everything we do has to be in and for Jesus Christ. Huh? All right. Listen. 20. And again. When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, excuse me, he shall die, okay? But thou hast not uh, given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he, shall, uh, which he has done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Okay, now I'm going to read that again, but I want you to understand this, this is the same thing. It's still, it, look, the pressure, uh, uh, the, the application is still to Ezekiel, to those of us who have the word. Mm -hmm. and if, look, if I send you to a sinner and you don't tell him and he dies, it's going to be on you. Okay. But if I, if I send you to a sinner and, he, and, and you tell him and he don't turn and he, and he dies and he goes, you know, dies for his iniquity, it's not going to be laid on your charge. Now he's talking about the righteous man. 20 again and again. When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness. Look, he's a righteous man. Now, I want you to listen to this. Somebody who is righteous, doing the right things, okay? He said, and he turns from his righteousness and commit iniquity. And I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die, okay? Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Good gracious, listen to what's going on here. Here's a righteous man. He was doing all these good things. And all of a sudden, he turns from his righteousness. Okay. And I'm sending you, Ezekiel, you and me, I'm sending you to him to tell him that he needs to turn back to his righteousness. And if he does not turn back, okay, he is going to die for the iniquity that he's done. Now listen to this. And all of his righteousness that he did before he committed iniquity is not going to remember, be remembered by God. Huh? It's only what you do for me lately is the attitude that God has. If look, if you look, if you have lived your whole life for the Lord, and just before the Lord comes to take you home, you turn and start going back against God, huh? that all that you did before that is not going to be counted because you've turned from righteousness and adopted iniquity. And you're going to die in your sin if you don't repent and come back. Now, let me say this. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to stumble and fall huh, more than once walking this way. But we have the knowledge to know that if we ask God to forgive us, for our iniquity, for our, our failure, for our shortcoming, he will and repent. He will forget that thing and he'll never remember it again. Now listen, 
Repenting, saints of God, is not being upset because you got caught. Repenting is becoming godly sorry for committing a sin or doing something that's contrary to God's word. Huh? So we become broken. Oh, man, I did not want to do this. I'm sorry, God. Please forgive me. And I'm not going to do it again. Okay. Now, let me tell you something. God knew his uh, real repentance. And he knew his, uh, if I just, if I'm just, you know, I'm caught, <laughs> you know, you know, my hands in the cookie jar type thing. So he knows whether this is a repentance from the heart or whether I'm just trying to cover up, you know, I'm, oh man, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that, huh? but I don't mean it because God knows that as soon as the dust clears, I'm going to do that or something else again. Since we have to come out of sin, huh? huh? we'll come out of sin. We were sinners. Saved by grace. Huh? We are no longer sinners in Christ Jesus. We are saved by grace. We still have the ability to sin, but we are no longer practicing, practicing sin. This is what we're talking about. So again, this, this, I want you to hear this. Uh, uh, let me read 20, uh, 20, and, I'm gonna read 20 and 21 together this time. He says again, When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Nevertheless, twenty one. If thou warn the righteous man, and the righteous uh, is and the righteous sin not, and he that doth and and he that doth not sin. He shall surely live, because he is warned, also thou hast delivered thy soul. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will speak to thee there. Okay, that's it. That's, that's just what I want you to hear. That's it. Because, and listen, the whole idea is to warn people. That's what this, this book is about. This book is, 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 is a instruction manual, you know. If you if you if you buy something that you got to put together, they give you the instructions that how to do this. You got to do it exactly the way they tell you to do it in order to get it right. Okay, and they have warnings. If you do this, be careful. You know, just you don't want to do this because this is not right. But this is what you want to do to make sure that it comes out right. Okay, this is what the Bible is. Huh? And now, but God has got people. Huh? He's got preachers, teachers. He's got evangelists, prophets. You know, and he's got Saints, we are saints. We're, we're we're part of the body of Christ, and we all have God's word in us, and we are charged with the responsibility of giving God's word to people. That's our witness. That's our testimony. Huh? So what we do, everybody's not going to be a preacher. You got to be anointed to preach, and you got to be anointed to teach, and to do those types of things. But you have the word in you, and you are to give that word to, the, to whoever the Lord sends you to. Huh? And if we always keep a mindset. No, they have a mindset to serve God. Everything about our life has to be with God's focus. We're focused on the Lord. Huh? So when we talk to people, we're just going to be, it's going to be the Lord coming out. Listen, I've mentioned this before, but when I used to talk, when I first came into the world, uh, in, out of the world, into, into, uh, into the Lord, I wasn't anybody I was coming into the church. And uh, I used to always, you know, I was impressed with Elder Carmichael. He was, he was a fine man in the Lord. And I used to compliment him from time to time. And he would never say thank you. <laughs> He'd always say, thank the Lord. And I'm saying, hey, wait, I'm, I'm telling you, I like this. Uh, I like this jacket or I like this suit. Or I like the way you preach this evening or this afternoon. And he'd always say, thank the Lord. Everything was thank the Lord, everything. So I'm thinking to myself, what is this? Why, you know, I mean, I can't even compliment this man. But what he was letting me know is that he's thanking God for whatever it is you were thanking him for, you know, whatever you were praised him for, he's giving God credit. So that's where we have to be saying to God, keep the, the spirit alive in you. Now, don't, don't spend your time worried about what you can't do. 
God said, I can do, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. So don't be trying to you know, uh, waste your time about things you can't control. Right? If you get sick, give it to the Jesus. Huh? <laughs> That's all I'm saying to you. You get in trouble, give it to Jesus. You know, because these things are going to happen to you down here in this lifetime. Nothing but trouble. Nothing but trouble. Uh, 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 nothing but trouble in the world. Because the world is run by Satan and all those spirits that came out of heaven with him. Okay. So, and that's what they're here for. That's their job. And they're going to do it until the Lord finishes all the work that he has set up here on earth. But keep this in mind. Whatever God has given you, he's given you to give somebody else. Okay. That's it. It's not just for you. It's for you to give to somebody else. Your love, the love that you have. It's, it don't work until you give it away, okay? God blesses you with money. Huh? He's going to give you some, but he's going to give you some to be able to give somebody else. He's going to give you something, huh? and he's not just for you, but he's going to give you something. And when somebody else comes in and falls in need, you're going to give what, what God gave you. You're going to share it with them. It's just the way it is. It's a cycle. Huh? And this thing about tithing and offerings, huh? God set this up. Why, preacher? Because he wants to be able to keep his, your, your, your financial avenue open. Hmm? If you give the, that little 10%, huh? he, he, look, all he wants, look, he give you a dollar. Okay. He said, look, you, you give me a dollar, give me a dime. You keep the 90 cent and I'm going to take that, 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 that dime, uh, that, that, that 10% and I'm going to multiply it back to you. Huh? And then when I multiply it back to you, it's not just for you. I'm going to multiply it back to you so you can be a blessing for somebody else when I need you. Huh? That's how this works. So we do God's will. Huh? We do God's will. Forget about what we don't know. Huh? Forget about what we, and don't take it, don't take credit for what you do know. Because you don't know no more than the Lord gave you. Don't get upset because somebody else is doing something that you can't do. Do what you can do to the best of your ability. Huh? Because God has set everything in order according to his plan for his people. And he knows exactly what you're capable of. And he knows exactly what you can do. Huh? And he ain't going to put you someplace where you can't accomplish it. And if he sends you to someplace that's difficult for you, he's going to see to it that you get through it. Because he's going to be doing it through you. Same thing he told Ezekiel. Don't worry about the faces. Don't worry about the hard faces, the hard looks. Don't worry about the words. Don't worry about the way they're going to treat you. Huh? Give them my word, yeah? and I'm going to be there with you. Okay, <laughs> that's all I have. I just wanted to share that with you. It, it's just important for us to understand that God is going to judge righteousness, and God's going to judge iniquity. And we want to be on the side of righteousness. Do God's will. Do God's will God's way. And watch God be God in your life. Okay, God bless you. Talk to you later.